It's impossible to imagine what the family, friends, and parents are going through right now of this deceased beloved sister of ours. But we send our love, du'as, and support to them. It's time for us to pull back that curtain and reveal the truth about what really took place over here and what is it that they're hiding from us that they don't want us to know about. Way of life as cute, even in hunted. Assalamu alaikum, welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you have not heard by now, just a few hours ago, news surfaced that a young 19 year old Muslim sister was shot dead in the streets of Blackbird. Aya Hashem was a 19 year old law student who had just passed her second year law exam. Sister Aya was murdered in what police suspect to be a drive-by shooting. The murderer is still on the loose and a manhunt alongside a murder investigation has been opened. Now, you see, I don't know about you, but when I hear about one of our own Muslim brother or sisters being killed or dying in some type of way like this, my mind starts to wander and I immediately think of hate crime. When a Muslim brother or sister dies in such a manner, my mind is immediately going towards a hate crime. I mean, with the United Kingdom's entire population of Muslims being only 5%, it's hard to imagine that when a Muslim is murdered or killed, that they weren't targeted. I just find it difficult to think that it's not a hate crime and rather it's just some fatal random shooting that took place. But lucky enough for us that uh, BBC wants us to rule out any type of hate or terror related crime because the police investigation are suggesting that there is no terror or hate crime behind such a thing. Actually, the police have issued a statement that they don't believe that this was a terror or hate driven crime at all. So they're suggesting us to rule out that possibility. Hey, 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 hang on for a second. How, how are we supposed to rule out any type of hate crime at all when this is taking place in less than 24 hours and that same police is tweeting out how clueless they are and how much they need our help to help them with their investigation. So how can they possibly rule out that this isn't a terror or a hate driven type of crime? Now I'm sure many of us would agree that we wish to have that same type of courtesy extended to us when a Muslim commits a crime and you don't assume that's an act of terror or an act of terrorism, I would hope that we would get that same type of courtesy, don't you think? Oh man, it would be so nice to uh, assume the best in a person and to rule out any type of potential terrorist attack because it was done by a Muslim. I mean, that would be fantastic media. I mean, in case you haven't caught the sarcasm, this is what we call a double standard. Now I wanna spend a few moments shifting our attention to the family of the deceased. I can't begin to fathom or imagine the amount of emotions and feelings that you must be going through at this moment. But I'd hope that I could provide just a little bit of solace with a few points that can help you during your time of mourning. Your beautiful child was taken away in the most best of blessed months which happens to be in the month of Ramadan. I know that doesn't make it any better for you, but you should feel good knowing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decided to take her back and call her back to Him in this beautiful blessed month of Ramadan. And not just in any time of the month of Ramadan, but in the last 10 nights of the month of Ramadan. In the month of Ramadan, the gates of the hellfire are closed and only the gates of paradise are open. She was killed in the process of defending her honor and herself and her property and that makes her a martyr in Islam. And most importantly, she died in the condition of fasting. And that can only mean, as the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi has promised and guaranteed paradise to those who pass away in the condition of fasting. So I know that you've lost someone that can't be replaced and there's a void that will never be able to be filled. But I hope you could find some tranquility in knowing that sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls back his servants and slaves that he loves so much at a more earlier time that you and I are not used to. And just like the parents in Surah Kaf, if you maintain sabr and patience in such difficult times and know that this is all part of the qadr and plan of Allah, then believe me, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is gonna reward you and replace that which you've lost with something better. It's my humble request to you all who are watching this video right now to please drop some love, some support, some du'as in the comment section below. When you open your fast today, please remember this beloved sister of ours in your du'as 
at the moment of you breaking your fast. No amount of words can describe what the parents are feeling right now and her family are feeling right now. But just know that your bro, along with the entire Muslim Ummah, is behind you and we support you and love you as well. And uh, if you ever need anything, just message me. I'd be more than happy to help and obliged to help. Uh, but until next time, I'm out.